A formal update on the refusal of PDP to sign the peace accord. PDP spokesman Olu Martins joins me on the news. Uh, he joins us from Edo State via phone. Good to have you join us. Good evening. Thank you for having me. So t t speak to us as to why your party, you have stated it, but you know, why your party refused to sign this peace accord? Because some people will say, look, um, it doesn't send the right signal to your um, supporters. Mm -hmm. What, it depends on what you mean by signal. Um, I remember a popular musician, I think it was White Clef, that said, We don't want peace, we want equal rights and justice. Because peace is not the absence of crisis, it's the presence of equal rights, it is the presence of uh, um, justice. And we don't want a ceremonial peace accord because all of the indications so far is making it look like this is not a contestation between political parties. It's beginning to look like this is a contestation between political parties in collusion with the uh, Nigerian police. And in very recent times, uh, we have also lost confidence in the capacity of independent electoral commissioner in Edo State to run this election in um, um, without uh, collusion with the opposition, you know, APC. So, why should we sign the peace accord? The peace accord means that we, are, we agree that it build up to an election. Because it, an election is a process. You just don't, it's not an answer. There's a process that leads to the answer. It's like a quadratic equation. Before you go to the answer, there's a process. There are stages to it. And all of the stages in this election have not convinced us that the police is willing to whip everybody in life. Don't forget that the responsibility of the police is the protection of life and property. And it doesn't mm -hmm. matter whose life, and it doesn't matter whose property. I and and Mr. Lumatis, have you, have you shared these concerns with the Commissioner of Police in the state, and what response are you getting? Yeah, we, we went to the day before yesterday, there about when the chairman of East and West was whisked off um, from his house in Ethema and then brought to Benin City, uh, we had the opportunity to engage the Commissioner of Police and he told us that his hands were high and that these were orders from above. The, the chairman of East and West is not the first, he's not the second, he's not the third, and by the last count, we know that we have had, we have had almost 30 of our people who were which stop literally from their own house, no charge, no arrest for us, and then in law that what is called forum convenience. If it allegedly a crime is committed in a uh, state, why do you take the people to Abuja and then put them in holding? They are incommunicado, they can see their wives, they can see their children for something that happened here, all right? This is a federal system of government, and I don't think it's a subnational. We have consistently, I went with our party chairman to pay a custody call on the commissioner of police right. um, when he first of all came. And he gave us these assurances. As it starts now, those assurances are falling apart because. In an right. incident that happened in Airport Road. Uh, uh, my my apologies, but we do have to leave it there, Mr. Lou Martins. Um, I'm, this is a continuing conversation. The election is just barely nine days away. Thank you for your time. PDP spokesman in Edo uh, State. <clears throat> All right, let's talk to some security stories. The chief of the Air Staff says, um, as the Nigerian Air Force forges ahead amid the security challenges, efficient resource management becomes not just an operational necessity, but a moral imperative. Air Marshal Hassan Abubakar explains that when resources are managed with integrity, it enhances the ability to maintain a high state of readiness. Sifon Essien reports. Officers of the Nigerian Air Force converge on the Air Force headquarters for a finance conference. The goal is to improve financial management in the Nigerian Air Force in the wake of evolving security challenges in the country. As the service tackles emerging security challenges, Efficient resource management becomes both an operational and moral necessity. When resources are managed with integrity and prudence, it enhances our ability to maintain a high state of readiness to train, equip, and deploy our personnel effectively, as well as to ensure that operational directives are executed 
without financial constraints. Fostering a culture of accountability in the management of Nigerian Air Force finances in support of contemporary air power demands. This was born out of the desire to ensure clear visibility in financial transactions, promote ethical behavior and encourage efficiency in the utilization of scarce resources. Just like other government organizations, the Air Force operates within the larger financial system of government. Without security, economic activities are stifled. Revenue generation suffer, and the capacity of the government to finance its operation diminishes. Conversely, without sound public financial management, the resources needed to address the security challenges effectively cannot be mobilized. This has led the present of the current regime and the past to introduce financial reforms that are audacious in nature to promote accountability, bring about transparency, instill fiscal discipline, and good governance. For the Nigerian Air Force authorities, effective financial management will enhance the ability to maintain a high state of readiness to train, equip, and deploy personnel effectively while ensuring operational directives are executed without constraints. C4 ACN, TVC News, Abuja. And residents of Plateau State are pleased with the introduction of a toll free emergency helpline by the leadership of Operation Safe Haven in the state. This development is in line with the efforts of the military high command to ensure quick passage of information for swift response. Senior reporter Funam Joshua in Plateau State has the details. Efforts of the leadership of Operation Safe Heaven in tackling and restoring normalcy across troubled communities in Plato State, including all areas of joint operations, have continued to receive commendation. The latest approach is the activation of an active toll-free emergency helpline for the general public. The toll-free line is specifically to serve as the fastest available means for the populace to report cases of insecurity within their communities to the headquarters of Operation Safe Heaven for prompt action. The toll free line is free. The toll free line, people should know that even if you do not have credit on your phone and you are able to dial the line published by Operation Safe Heaven, you will be able to get to the higher authority for swift response or swift action. Uh, the toll free line is 0800 Zero, zero, two, zero, two, zero, three. This development is receiving commendations from residents of Plato State. We know very well that most often time people in the villages will say that they have made calls and then calls are not going or they don't know who to even reach. But I, I want to believe that uh, they are able to make these numbers available is a good one. Uh, for me, I will also call on our citizens here on the plateau to ensure that they take advantage of uh, With the new commander, we have seen how he has take, taken effort to ensure that the uh, plateau remain peace and safe for residents. The new strategy of uh, uh, giving out lines, uh, uh, you know, hotlines for the general public to reach them is timely. It, since it's free, people will be able to tell them at all times what is happening within their locality. So it's a very, very good account of development. It will assist the insecurity that we are facing today. The general public is enjoined to take advantage of the initiative and report security breach or any form of crime to the Operation Safe Heaven. Phnom Joshua, TVC News, Joss. Operatives of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps in Ondo State have arrested 12 suspects for engaging in illegal oil bunkering, illegal mining, uh, vandalism, and stealing in the state. The state commandant of NSDC, Oluyemi Bilui, who paraded the suspects in Akure, said the arrest was made possible through collaboration with the Nigerian army. Senior reporter, your DJ Muradio reports. This is another success story for officers and men of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, NSDC, in Undo State. This time, 12 suspects were paraded before journalists. Three of the suspects were arrested for oil theft, while five were apprehended 
for illegal mining. Three persons were paraded for stealing and one for the vandalization of national assets. Uh, this morning we'll be parading 12 suspects. The state commandant of the NSCDC, Oluyemi Ibiloye, explained that some of the suspects were arrested through the collaboration of the Nigerian army. Actually paraded some illegal miners and I will say that we will not allow our national wealth to be plundered by some selfish elements. Uh, these five were arrested um, around Agulekpa mining site in the Dibu local government on the 3rd of September.